So Asa, give us an overview of, of the potential of smart cities. I know you're quite involved with the World Expo 2020, kind of building this, uh, this blueprint for our cities of the future. So give us an overview of what the potential is. There's, there's a massive potential. If you look at the, the rapid growth of urbanization which is happening, uh, the challenges what, what are coming along with that. So there's a, there's a huge potential for the smart cities and the use cases, and use cases are evolving uh, based on city requirements. And every city has its own challenge or a pain point, and these are actually uh, uh, getting addressed in every different city, I would say. So uh, you, can, you can take some use cases, for example, from one city and apply, but it's not necessary that use case in one city which is successful can be applied in other city. So I, I would say there's a huge potential. Got it. Now, you're going to be at uh, uh, having a lot of people coming through Dubai. Give us an overview. What what is Siemens doing to make it easier for a, a, a visitor, for instance? What's behind that? So um, we are the infrastructure distillation partner. We are premium partner for Expo 2020. Uh, there's a Siemens technology which is going to you know look into comfort, safety, and security, and you know make sure that visitors are uh, moving through seamlessly. Uh, so that's what we're looking in, and there's a lot of technology which is in the back end, and there'll be a lot of technology which will also interact with the visitors. That's what will happen at Expo. Got it, got it, thank you. Now, a lot of excitement was built up around smart cities, mm -hmm. uh, yet, yet the slow adoption rate, how do you explain that? Do you have any, any, any insights as to why are city moving so slow towards adopting these solutions, although the potential seems great? You're absolutely right, you know, uh, when we look at this smart city topic, right, it's been there for some time already and not many cities have really actually gained much out of that. Uh, but all I can say is um, you need to focus on the use cases relevant for yourself and try to do that. It's not doing a one big Sorry. bang kind of a approach. I would rather do actually a small uh, piece which is like, you know, looking at your challenges and pain points, trying to address, get the POC done, scale it up, and then you can go for a big bang from there on. I think that's a much better approach than just doing all in one and trying to have a big you know, strategy out of that. So I would say take an area which has a pain point, try to address the challenges, bring the specific use cases, make it successful and scale it up. And that's the way I would say. Got it. Now I know last time I talked to you, you had an awesome uh, mobile phone, you're all about analytics. How do you measure the smartness of a municipality? What makes a city smart and, and what sort of indices or what sort of, uh, uh, if you will, uh, metrics is used across the board to say that city uh, needs to move in there or that municipality needs to move in there? So, um, like in any city, a municipality is a critical part of it to manage the infrastructure. I would say it, it needs to look into what, what the residents are looking at, for example. And, you know, are we looking at something to do with the waste management? Are we looking at the traffic? Are we looking at utility? What are we getting into, right? So, uh, if you are able to communicate with your residents and also manage operations seam seamlessly, and maybe pass on the benefits of optimization to the residents, uh, I think that's where the success is. And uh, analytics helps this because you can learn from yesterday's data, and today technology allows you to build up some machine learning models, wherein you can actually start predicting for a certain period of time, uh, not only based on the seasons and other stuff, but also based on certain events, for example. So uh, I think uh, if you apply a proper technology and develop certain models, you're able to predict and you should be able to see, okay, where are the optimizations, where are the points of failures, and maybe you can also have the uptime guarantee for the residents. So we can look at various touch points, I would say. Municipalities can focus from actually looking at the water management, we're talking about waste management, we're talking about utility, we're talking about traffic management, we're talking about even the car park management, if in case municipalities are uh, managing that. So a lot is there to be managed. Right, and now let's take it a little bit deeper. Is there a way to measure the impact on the community, on the citizen itself? Is there any tools that you suggest to do that or any ways to look into that? Yeah, this is where actually the municipalities or uh, city planners or you know you can say operators, city operators have to be a bit bold. They need to make a, a, a technology which is inclusive for the residents wherein they can also have uh, their share of voice. That means you not only get the suggestions, feedbacks, it's a, it's a cycle, right? So it's an improvement process. So this is where we need to see how far the technology is adapted by the you know, operators, city operators, I would say. Uh, if that comes into play, 
for sure, I think you know there are a lot of uh, you know benefits for residents and also for the city operators because it's a feedback, it's a con continuous feedback, right, for the improvements and for any suggestions, I would say. Got it. And stay tuned for a webcast coming up in uh, January 2020 and more on the cities of the future. Thank you. Thank you, Lubin. Pleasure meeting you. Cheers.